predicting reactions, obviously just predicting redox reactions. Hopefully you have the first heading down. Step one, list all species present and label them as OAs, RAs, or neither. So this is really identical to what we did with the acid and base section. Okay, we're gonna have to break things up. So if I had sodium chloride aqueous, a sodium chloride solution, I'm not gonna put that compound together on my list. I'm gonna break it up. Okay, so that's an ionic compound. So I'd put sodium ions on my list. I'd put chloride ions on my list. And then I would also include water because it's aqueous, we have water. Okay, and water is actually a potential oxidizing agent and a potential reducing agent. Okay. Um, so just like we did before, if you had a strong acid, you'd break that up into its two pieces also. Okay. And again, just like before, you're gonna be including water when something is, uh, is aqueous. Okay. Second step, uh, you're going to scan your table for everything in the list from step one and find the strongest oxidizing agent and the strongest reducing agent. Remember in your table, the strongest OA is up high. The strongest reducing agent is in the second column down low. So you're scanning the first column of your redox table on page seven for what is highest you're scanning the RA list for what is lowest, because that would be the strongest that you would have. Okay. Exact same layout as your acid base table, strongest acid on the top, strongest base on the bottom. Step three, kind of the same as before. We're going to take the, the two pieces and, and put them together. Okay. Before we took the acid and the base and put them together, now we're gonna t write two reactions and put them together. We're gonna have a reduction half reaction for that strongest oxidizing agent. And our table is built in terms of reductions. So we're gonna take the reaction uh, from our table in the forward direction. So you're gonna write the reaction exactly as written in your table. Okay. Next, you're gonna write the oxidation half reaction for your RA, but we've got to flip it now. Okay, your table is all reductions to get the oxidation. You've got to look at the reverse reaction and write it out backwards. Okay. Okay. If you go forward in that data table on page seven, it's a reduction. As the heading says, if you go backwards, it's an oxidation. Now, you saw me do this yesterday in the first lesson where I netted up two uh, half reactions. I made sure the electrons balanced. I had to scale them, kind of like we did in Hess's Law, by doubling or tripling one of the reactions. We're never gonna divide by, in Hess's Law, you, you could sometimes divide something by two. Here, we'll only be scaling up to find the lowest common multiple of electrons. So balance the electrons lost and gained and obtain a net ionic equation, okay? All the spectator ions disappear in the net. So some of the things from step one are gonna disappear, they won't be there anymore, okay? Last, kind of just like we did in acid and base, we would have made a prediction based on the position of the table. We're gonna do the same here. We're gonna use the spontaneity rule that we learned about yesterday, okay? Uh, we're gonna be able to identify the reaction we wrote in step five as spontaneous, which means it does occur on its own. Think of a spontaneous as going downhill. You don't have to do anything for something to go downhill. You just let it go. If the OA is above the RA, the reaction is spontaneous. If after step five, we find the best OA is below the best reducing agent, we have two weak oxidizing reducing agents. They're not strong enough to spontaneously transfer those electrons, okay? That is like something going uphill, okay? Yes, you can make something go uphill, but it doesn't do it on its own. It's non-spontaneous. You have to do work to get the reaction to occur.
Okay. In Chapter 14, we'll find out something like recharging a battery is a non-spontaneous reaction. Okay. Batteries don't just recharge themselves all by themselves, but if you connect them to the wall circuit and that does electrical work, you can make a reaction go that's non-spontaneous. Okay. For spontaneous, we often just use a regular forward arrow. For non-spontaneous, you can put an X through it as one way. Okay. The best is probably just to write spontaneous or non-spontaneous uh, to convey to me that you understand which of the two options of step six. Uh, so first example, uh, predict the most likely reaction for, uh, and we have zinc metal placed in hydrochloric acid. Okay. So we have two chemicals and we have to generate a list, okay. breaking up anything that's ionic or ionizing any strong acids. So I'll start going through these. Okay. So we have zinc metal. Okay, that's a metal all by itself. So that's not ionic. That is just a neutral metal and all metals except for mercury are solids at room temperature. And I virtually never give a mercury example. I've never given a mercury example. So we got zinc to put on our list. That takes care of our first chemical. Okay, but we've got uh, more. It's placed in hydrochloric acid. Okay. Uh, we've got to figure out, is that a strong acid or a weak one? If it's weak, we're going to leave it together. If it's strong, we're going to break it up. Page 8 has your acid base table, and hydrochloric acid is way at the top of your acid base table where the strong ones are. So that is a strong acid. So we're going to break this up into its two pieces. Okay. Before, we would have wrote hydronium and Cl minus as the two pieces. Uh, that is still correct. I wouldn't mark you wrong if you did that. But your whole acid base table for read, sorry, your redox table uses H plus instead of hydronium. So I'm going to follow the way your data table is built and use the H plus version. So a strong acid, I'm going to split it up, H plus, Cl minus. Uh, is there any other chemicals in solution? I got zinc, I got H plus, I got Cl minus, water. Anytime you have an acid, it, it's in solution. This question's a little bit vague. You, you have to pull it from the uh, hydrochloric acid. Now, sort of the hard part, uh, and it's not difficult. It's just as a teacher, I kind of have memorized the table. As a student, it's new to you, and you're scanning the table. Okay. Uh, first thing, though, we get a neutral metal. All neutral metals are reducing agents. So in the RA table, zinc is right there. It's a fairly good reducing agent. Uh, H plus is all over the place. There is H plus all by itself. That's an OA. And then I have to watch out for pairings. Is H plus paired with anything else, with chloride or water? And uh, one of the few things that H plus isn't paired with is water, but this is where you definitely need to, to slow down. Uh, next, we get to chloride. There's chloride all by itself, and all the ides, the chloride, bromide, iodide, are all RAs. Uh, then we get to water. And water is one of those chemicals in the table on both sides, okay? That can potentially disproportionate uh, when the same thing reacts with itself. Now, it's not at the very bottom. There is water as an OA. And there is water as an RA. Okay. So I've done a lot of the listing. There actually is a pairing that I've missed. Um, so let's see if anybody can pick up a pairing. It's on the RA column. Uh, we see we have chloride and we have water. 
we have that pairing. Uh, so I'm going to label that, and we can and we connect them together. Okay. The only way to have fluoride and water as a reducing agent is that pairing. Okay? Now I've got everything listed, okay? and I've nicely circled it on the table. Okay? Now one thing you're not allowed to do for your diploma, but we'll let you do, if you want to bring in stickies, it can be really handy to have tiny little sticky notes and stick them right on your redox table, and you can identify the compounds as you see them, and then you're just looking up for the highest sticky on the OA side and the lowest sticky for the RA side. It's a really nice tool. Okay? Alberta Ed wouldn't let you do it on a diploma because you could write little notes on your sticky and cheat. Okay, so we're going to scan this table, I'll switch colors. What is the best reducing agent I have in this whole example? So it would be the highest up in the first column. So I only have two red circles, and that's the highest one I have. So that's my strongest oxidizing agent in this reaction. Okay. So that oxidizing agent is going to be my reduction. So my strongest OA, which is my GER, or my reduction, I keep using the GER instead of just going R to remind you it's the gaining. Uh, what's that? It's 2H plus. And now I'm just copying the half reaction exactly what's in the table. You're not predicting it. You're just pulling it. Now I've got to find the strongest RA. I've labeled four RAs. And I'm just going to look at my table and go from the bottom up. From the strongest RA at the bottom, when I go up, the first one I hit is solid zinc. So that is the strongest I have. Okay. So that's my reducing agent, which is my Leo. Okay. The reducing agent is the reactant. The oxidation is the whole thing I'm about to write. No, I've got to flip it. Zinc metal is the strongest RA. And so I have to start there and write this backwards. So zinc produces zinc 2 plus and two electrons. Okay. And now I have my two half reactions. I believe I'm on step five from the previous slide. I'm going to net these up. Uh, I need to make sure my electrons balance, and they do. I don't have to do anything. Two electrons gain, two electrons lost. So I'm following the law of conservation uh, of mass and energy, and the electrons are going to be, uh, they balance. So I have my reaction. 2H plus plus zinc, one zinc is going to produce bubbles, hydrogen gas, and zinc 2 plus ions. Okay. Last, does this reaction occur? You have to think of the position of the R, RA and the OA. It is spontaneous. The, the strongest RA is below the strongest OA. Okay, so the oxidizing agent is relatively strong, the reducing agent is relatively strong. One can have the electrons ripped away from the other. Okay, so we've just finished our first predicting, our, uh, predicting a redox reaction. Chloride was a spectator ion, and water didn't do anything. Water is another spectator. Okay, so you cannot store an acid in a zinc container. If I had a zinc bucket, Okay, or a zinc vessel, a zinc water bottle, and I put acid in it, it's going to react with it and eat a hole right through that zinc uh, bottle. Okay. Second example. What if I had a gold ring, and I, I'm in the lab, and I spill some acid on my gold ring? Am I in trouble or not? What is going to happen? Okay, so I'm going to run through the steps. I'm going to do it a little bit quicker this time. Uh, so gold ring, um, so that's just gold, okay, it's not ionic, it's just gold, so that's going to be a gold ring is going to be solid, all metals by themselves are solid. Okay. In hydrochloric acid, 
we just did that. That's a strong acid, so we use the H plus form, and Cl minus is what's left over, and I need to include water. Um, neutral metals are all reducing agents. Uh, acid, we label that as an OA. Chloride is an RA. Water can potentially be both. And we've got that chloride water pairing again. This is a very similar question to the one we just did. I'm going to clean off that table in a second and relabel what we have. I'll scroll back to this question very soon. The only real difference is we don't have zinc anymore. We now have gold instead of zinc. Our strongest oxidizing agent hasn't changed because we still only have H plus in water. So our oxidizing agent half reaction is 2H plus plus two electrons making hydrogen gas. Our strongest reducing agent is going to be different this time. Uh, we've got gold, we've got chloride, we've got chloride and water, and just water. So I've got to go up from the bottom. And the very first chemical I hit now is water. Our strongest reducing agent is the solvent now. So I have to write out that reaction, but backwards. Two waters makes oxygen gas and 4H+. Plus. Do my electrons balance? Can I start adding this up? No, they don't balance. Correct feedback in the chat. I've got two and four. The lowest common multiple uh, is going to be four. Okay, I can, the, the first multiple of between two and four is going to be four that they both repeat. So I want to get four electrons. on both sides. The bottom has four, so I don't have to multiply that by one. The oxidizing agent half reaction, I have to double everything because a doubling will double my two electrons to four. Okay. Now I can't just double one piece without doubling everything on both sides. So I'll double that to four. The hydrogen was a one, and I'm going to double that to a two. And now I can cancel out my electrons four on one side, four on, oops, four on other. Uh, but there's some more things I can cancel. I've got 4H plus aqueous on the reactant side and 4H plus aqueous on the product side. I just forgot to write the aqueous. And that's it that I can cancel. So my net reaction is two water can make two hydrogen gas plus oxygen gas. Uh, we're, we're not worried about our gold. If this occurs, our gold ring is fine. Does this reaction occur? Let's flip up to our table. There's our strongest RA. It's kind of uphill. Okay, it's not going to go uphill on its own. So this does not happen. Okay, water doesn't. You know, I've got water in my mug here. This is mug isn't bubbling like crazy. If this was spontaneous, my water would be producing oxygen gas and hydrogen gas. Okay. Now you can make this occur. We've got a Hoffman apparatus, and if you run electrical current through water 
you can split it into hydrogen gas and oxygen gas, just like this reaction shows. You actually get double the hydrogen compared to the oxygen because you get two H2 and versus one oxygen. Okay. So if you wanted to try to make hydrogen, maybe you want to make a fuel cell car and you, where can I get the hydrogen? Well, you could take water, but you'd have one big electrical bill to, uh, to put the energy in to split water up. Um, hopefully you're starting to pick up um, some of the patterns. So I'm going to ask uh, you to try to do this next one. What if nitric acid, and that's another strong acid, you might have to look up the formula, uh, is poured over a copper sheet. So those, again, are the two, uh, two half reactions. I'm going to do one more example and then have you practice uh, to wrap up this example. Uh, the next example, the last one I'm going to do, is pretty much as hard as it's going to get. Now, difficulty is just because there's tons of things in the table and a whole bunch of pairs. Okay? Um, with practice, students can show uh, mastery of this. So our last example that I'm going to do, what are the products of the reaction of tin 2 chloride with ammonium dichromate acidified with hydrochloric acid? Oh boy, okay, we got a, we're going to have a big list here. We've got a lot of chemicals. I'll start building my list. I've got tin 2 chloride. Okay, that's an ionic compound, so I'm going to split up the pieces. I've got tin, S, N, and I don't have to worry about the charge. That Roman numeral tells me it's the plus two type. Okay, so that's a metal ion. Tin to chloride, Cl minus. Okay. Do not put in coefficients. A lot of students want to balance the tin to chloride and maybe put two Cl's. But we're only doing a list. We're not doing anything about quantity. So don't worry about stoichiometric coefficients in front. So that's tin chloride taken care of. I've got ammonium dichromate. Ammonium, okay. that's both of those words, ammonium and dichromate, are on uh, your periodic table, the polyatomic ion table. Okay. So you don't have to memorize those. You'd have to go look them up. Ammonium, it's alphabetic, so it's one of the first ones. I think it's the second one on the table after acetate. That's NH4. Dichromate, most students aren't used to, but it comes up a lot in electrochem. That is Cr2O7 to minus. Okay. Again, that's in the polyatomic ion table uh, on the same page as your periodic table. Again, I'm not worried about balancing the ion charges because I don't need count. Uh, acidified with hydrochloric acid. Uh, so that's a strong acid that we've seen for the third time today. And I'm going to put H plus on my list. And then I'm not going to put chloride again. I already have chloride on my list. So uh, I've got more chloride, but I'm not going to write Cl twice. And I encourage you, don't, if you have the same ion showing up a second time, don't write it again. It really confuses things. Uh, and last, I always have to include water. So now I have a bunch of labeling to do. The hard part is the labeling and finding the strongest. Um, so tin 2. Oh, there's tin 2. And we expect metal ions to be oxidizing agents. Okay. Uh, what makes this a bit tricky is tin 2 is also an RA. So somewhere on the RA side, I'm going to find SN2+. There it is, okay. as an RA. Okay. Metal ions are often just OAs, but they're sometimes both. Okay. Next, we have chloride. Okay. Ides are always RAs. And we've got that pairing with water again, which is a little bit of a pain to write. I'm going to connect those two together. And that's the half reaction right above the chloride oxidation. That's done. Ammonium. Okay. 
this is going to annoy students a little bit. There's no ammonium on the table. So while you're learning, you might spend two or three minutes scanning your table for NH4 and it's not there. Uh, and it's just the more homework you do and the more practice you do, uh, you pretty much get used to these ions that aren't on the table. Okay? Uh, so you're just going to have to trust me, you can scan the whole table tonight and, and, and see that it's not there. Uh, dichromate is there, okay? but not by itself. Uh, dichromate with acid is there, Cr207 with a whole bunch of H+, and we do have H+. And this is a quite powerful oxidizing agent. Acidified dichromate will react with almost anything. Human tissue, every metal, but gold. Um, it's kind of a nasty, uh, a nasty substance. Uh, not one you'd want to get, uh, get on your body. Okay. And last, we've got water. Water is on the list in two places. There's water as a RA and water as an OA. Okay. Now we've got to find our winners from this bit of a mess. Okay. Now we don't have to really scan through everything. You just, for the OA, you start at the top and you go down. And the first one we hit is dichromate. So that's our strongest oxidizing agent. I'm going to write that out. So I'm just going to my periodic table, pulling it exactly. Cr2O7 2 minus aqueous plus 14H plus plus six electrons. Okay. I'm pulling that six electrons straight from the table. Produces two. I can't quite read the table, so I'm going to my paper copy. Two chromium three plus ions. and seven water. That's my oxidizing agent taken care of. My strongest reducing agent, I'm not going to scan through all the circles. I'm just going to go to the bottom. Ooh, the strongest reducing agent is down below, and the highest one up is tin 2 as an RA. Now, I've got to be careful. I've got to make sure I stick with the proper tin. This is where the stickies can be quite handy for you and will allow you to use them even on tests or quizzes. You just can't write any notes on them. So I've got to go backwards. Tin 2 plus produces, I'm trying to line up that blue arrow and that green arrow. Uh, SN4 plus and two electrons. Okay. Now I've done all the hard work. I got my list. I didn't miss anything. I found the two strongest. My electrons don't balance. I've got six and two. The lowest common multiple. Now let's see, I've got six, 12, 18, two, four, six, eight. Uh, six is an, is, an, is an overlap. Six is my lowest common multiple. I need to get the green equation up to six electrons, which requires me to triple it. Okay. I have one SN2 plus, so I'm going to triple that to three, triple the SN4 plus from one to three, and triple two to six. And that cancels out my electrons. Okay. Uh, to save time, I'm not going to write out the whole reaction. Let's just see if it's spontaneous or not. I know dichromate's way up high, so I'm expecting it to be spontaneous, and it is. It is very much downhill from the OA to the RA. So I didn't write the reaction out, but if I did, it would be spontaneous. Uh, so that is how we uh, predict redox reactions uh, in this course. Okay. Again, similar to acid-base, 
uh, we'll do a little calculations uh, towards the end of this unit and we're going to need to be able to write equations to do any calculations.